from Draft Day Sports 2020, uh, Tulane Green Wave. We are in, I believe, our fifth season. Let's check this out real quick. Let's see if we can get some season recaps here. Yeah. So there you can see what we did in our in my first four seasons. Uh, last year, we made the NCAA tournament three years now. Uh, we actually made the Sweet 16 last year. So, uh, on to year five. Can take a look, first of all, at the recruiting class that we worked on. What's up, Chris? Uh, we can take a look here at the recruiting class we've pulled in so far. Uh, we do still have a handful of offers out. We had a, a lot of scholarships available this year because of so many transfers. Um, so... We did land a couple of key guys that we absolutely needed. We do still have a handful of offers out, and then we're rolling one scholarship over into the next season uh, because there's really just not much, a whole lot of quality left out there that we were very interested in, but still a good recruiting class. You can take a quick look here at our dashboard. Uh, so you can see this first class that I recruited, Stetson, uh, Ladeau, and Jay Malone are all seniors now. Uh, and then a couple of big juniors in Higgins and you know, Calvin Harris, Marquette Holmes, our pair of shooting guards that have been uh, extremely solid for us. So we'll get this year and hopefully one more year out of all three of those. Although Higgins could go pro at any time. I'm, I'm kind of surprised he's still here, uh, but I'm happy for it. What's Ledo upset about? Uh, he Apparently he doesn't like some of his teammates. Oh, yeah, he's been fighting a lot with teammates and getting in trouble and that sort of thing. So, uh, guys... This is, as usual, the the season stream. So we're going to get you all the way through the fifth season here with the Tulane Green Wave tonight. Um, and then we'll see how it goes going forward. Uh, I think there, there might be some new stuff coming out shortly that we might be working on. Uh, so uh, we'll try to keep the basketball streams coming here and there, but there might be less focus. I've also had a lot of people uh, saying they want to see some more TEW, and I want to do that too. Uh I haven't played it as much lately, but it's still extremely fun. So uh, we'll get into all that good stuff. I know Higgins the junior, right? This is his third season already. I just remember landing the guy not that long ago. We're already into his junior year. All right, so we are on the right conference. I was just checking because we hadn't had a, a game pop up yet. So I saw some other stuff, Kentucky and whatnot up there. I wanted to make sure I had – sometimes that uh, – if you change the conference here that you're viewing, sometimes that can – linger from in between saves so we're set up right we're on the american <clears throat> unranked to start the year i expect that to change uh fully expect this to be an ncaa type season and you know with um the guys that transferred out i don't know if it's as much of a lock as i thought that it would be but uh our goal is still the sweet 16 and beyond really so we'll see how it plays out let's get it started here oh we should since it's been a while, we should take a look and make sure before we get going here that our depth chart is set up somewhat reasonably. Ooh, I'm not crazy about Harris starting over Stetson. Uh, this is not what I set up, I don't believe. I believe Jones is a walk-on. He's a freshman. Is he a scholar? No, he's a scholarship freshman. I feel like I had already gone through and set this up once. We know we want London playing all the backup at the four and five. Well, Malone could get in there too. That's all right. Uh, I would be fine with Harris sort of rotating in as that other guard. So London, Harris, Malone, Haywood. Let's see if we just let them fix the matrix here, what they do with it. So, Harris still getting solid minutes. Let's go ahead and move him up there just so it looks right to me. Move Malone up as well. Why is this guy getting time at the three? Because Harris is on the court every time they want to put this guy out there, which is just four minutes in the first half. Uh, so, we are going to go ahead and to let Harris do it there and there and let Jones get on the court in those periods so we just get the, these guys out of our rotation 
So we are, you know, because of those transfers, we got five starters. We got four bench players. We got a solid. What's up, Breeze? What's up, Blazer? Not, oh, you can't be beating on my Rattlers. So I think we got a good rotation here. A uh, good nine good nine deep rotation setup that I really like. So let's roll forward with that and see how it works out. Uh, hopefully well. But I really, I can't, you can't bench my starting senior point guard. Like, get out of here. So we got Bethune Cookman. We take care of business there. Nice little, what was that, 26-point win to get us started there. And uh, Bethune Cookman was a real thorn in our side while we were at Fort A&M. So glad to get them taken care of. Uh, dispatch them early on and get on the right track. 1-0. and Perfect season. Let's shut it down. I'm really interested in seeing how how these upperclassmen do because I mean this team. Ooh, we should we should take a look at our strategy real quick. We're we're running about sixty percent in the offensive set now. Our four of our five starters are upperclassmen, but then we do have Jones, the freshman, uh, London, one of our first guys off the bench. Both both going to be freshmen, so uh, we can leave it at sixty. I don't want to mess with things. You know, it's been working so far. We can keep it at that. I think. Unless things start going horribly, and then we'll blame the coach. The William and Mary Tribe coming on down to Devlin Fieldhouse to take on your Tulane Green Wave, led by D.D. Higgins and Marquette Holmes. Oh, closer than it should have been. 12 points at home. I saw Stetson put up a big game. Uh, not sure what happened there. But, you know, a win's a win. We'll take that. Moving on. Uh, we should really beat the William and Mary Tribe by more than 12 in a home game. So unless that was... <laughs> Bree said, imagine going undefeated the whole season and getting upset by the last ranked team. Yeah, you know, I mean, weird things like that happen. I remember, you know, there were years that Duke was awesome. And they go in with like a two or three seed and they get, get beat by like Northern Iowa or something. Yeah, that's all right, Blazer. A lot of those uh, smaller teams, the recruiting's difficult. So you can see here Brian Cole and Jonathan Harris are two big signees. Uh, both signed their letters of intent, so they will both be here next year. That's definitely good news for us. Don't want them. Uh, our two big recruits that we really needed, it would have hurt pretty badly had they not qualified. But no worries there. They're all qualified. Um, let's see what kind of messages we're getting here. No. trying to get like robo text or something from political nonsense on my my phone in the middle of a stream like uh i think not <laughs> so yeah a lot of those smaller teams are, are behind in the online league uh you know with Ryder last year i picked up one good player i'm pretty excited about is a shooting guard uh we'll see how it goes this year i actually missed the um i missed the the day that we were supposed to upload so that we could get the Memphis scouting reports from the Memphis camp and America East. So all of my schools, I did not get those regional camps that they really needed, especially the smaller schools. So uh, this year, you know, it'll just be a bit of a toss up uh, with those smaller schools for me. We'll see, we'll see if I can pull a rabbit out of a hat. So we got Tulane headed into Pittsburgh, our first uh, power conference matchup for this one. And it doesn't appear to be a true road game. It appears to be in one of these tournaments. So if anybody, small school, yeah. If anybody knows the name of this conference by the emblem, just shout it out in chat. But let's see if we can take out the Panthers. Yeah, 13 points. Look at Marquette Holmes, Mr. Higgins showing up big time. A couple of juniors there. So now, next day of the tournament, we're taking on UNLV. A couple of undefeated teams here. Should be exciting to see who gets that upper hand early on in the year. What do the running Rebs have for the green wave? Mark at Holmes. I think that was B.B. Higgins as well. Now we got a championship game. I hope it's a championship game at least in this same tournament. The, the name of this tournament, Breeze. We're in a tournament, clearly, because... Let me cancel this. 
you can see the little emblem right here that my cursor is on. Uh, that means that this is some kind of preseason tournament. I guess I can just jump over to the dashboard and figure it out. <laughs> Good luck with that, Blazer. So we're in the Fallen Heroes tournament. And this is going to be the championship game of that tournament. So a couple of tough games here. We got Vanderbilt, who usually is pretty good. They are they are undefeated, uh, and then we're going to go on the road against another Power Five school. So a couple of big games here for us. This will this will give us a good gauge on where we're at early season. Championship game of the Fallen Heroes tournament. Took them out. Look at D D Higgins, eighteen and seventeen. That's my boy. When Higgins goes off, Tulane goes off overall. Uh, Holmes is the most consistent score, but. Whew, Man, ah, Blazer hadn't beaten me in, in the NCBA. Some of them might sneak up and get my Louisville team with those upper upper uh, upper echelon schools, but but they're not taking out my small school recruiting. I got too powerful of a base going. Well, it Ryder at least. Ryder's going to be good to go. Uh, I just took over uh, North Northern Kentucky University more recently. They are a work in progress. <laughs> they might be one of the worst teams I've ever seen in my life until they added a couple of walk-ons. So if that tells you anything, the walk-ons are leading the way for the Norse. Um, but my rider squad should be decent. And I've got a handful of uh, transfers and, and other guys that are going to be coming into those smaller schools as well. So uh, there's hope on the horizon for them. So now we do get our first true road game of the year. It's going to be at Minnesota against the Golden Gophers. So, on the road, and woo, close one, but my man Higgins with 14 and 14. Uh, somebody dropped 20 points on him. I think it may have been Stetson. I didn't catch who our third player was in there, but close game on the road, but we took him out. So, as I said, big, big stretch of two games there, championship game of that tournament, into the first true road game against a Power 5 school, and we won them both. We beat Vandy easily. Uh, a little bit tougher there on the road against Minnesota. But, guys, here we are. Seven games in, seven wins. Exactly what we were looking for. And here we are, ranked number 11 in the country. Little old Tulane Green Wave out of the American Athletic Conference. Year five, and we are rolling. It's a green wave across the nation. Tulane taking over. What's up, Miguel? I'm about to steal all your recruits in the NCBA. Don't be mad, man. Uh, don't mean anything by it. I just want to win. Although, of course, you're going to have to outbid Justin for whatever recruits he's going after. They ought to be easily identifiable because they got like money hanging out of their pockets and like they're dragging PlayStations and stuff behind them. So uh, that's how Justin rolls. Here we go. Home game against St. Joe's. Doesn't look like St. Joe's is having a great year. We took care of business there. 33 points. Higgins with 12. Holmes poured it in. Oh, we're just... I thought we were already 7-0. Well, we're 7-0 now. One way or another, we won, we won our first seven games. So, <laughs> it's about to happen, man. Just wait and see. Louisville's going to go off in the NCBA this year, uh, recruiting-wise. Might be a tough season on the court. All right, so we just lost a recruit to Belmont. And if you remember in the recruiting episode, I said once these guys, if they commit elsewhere, we're just going to have to let them go. Uh, I do believe we were out of money. You know, We didn't have a whole lot of options. Oh, yeah. I could definitely. I'm telling you, that's why I was saying, like, this school, Breeze is talking about turning this into something like the Yukon Dynasty. Like, I mean, I don't know if you go undefeated and win the national championship every year. There's too many other good schools. But you could have some really nice regular seasons and rack up some wins at a school like this if you know what you're doing. Uh, because you know, that while this conference is still tough, um, Yukon, Cincinnati, 
a handful of teams like that. But that's not Duke. That's not North Carolina, Kansas, uh, Louisville, whatever that other school in Kentucky is called. Loser Cats or something like that. I don't know. But, um, you know, so UC and, and UConn are, are going to be tough. But you can, if you build up really deep teams, you can have at least pretty good odds there. Uh, you should be able to have a whole lot of seasons where you lose less than five. All right, so we're headed on the road to play against Southern Mississippi. We took care of business with 10, Lado, Malone, and we had a red message. And I did not see if that was an incident or an injury. So let's find out. I didn't see anything in the inbox, so it is an injury to B.B. Higgins. Oh, it's just back spasms. Nine days, he'll be all right. I'm not even going to go in and... Ooh, what was... What's Kevin London doing? Come over here. Four or five shots, nine points as a freshman. He's doing business there. Calvin Harris went scoreless in that game. How did Malone do? Let's go back to our box score. All right, see you when you get back again. We'll be on for a while. We still got hopefully about 30 more games to go this year. Let's see this box score. See what Malone did. If Higgins got hurt, so Higgins only played 20 minutes. Malone came in for 20. Got 15 points, five rebounds. So, you know, very, very good performance. Uh, you know, he stepped up when he needed to. That's a senior. Uh, and that's why, you know, that first class was all about bringing in these guys. It could just be a good foundation. And Malone's definitely done that when he's got on the court. It's unfortunate for him. He got recruited over a little bit uh, or else he would have definitely, he had every bit of potential to be a four-year starter for us. Uh, he just got out recruited or oh, recruited over rather. Oh, Zags and UConn having a little early season battle of the top 15 ranked teams. Brendan Frazier. So we are into December, early, early December, probably a little more than halfway through our non-conference slate of games here. Uh, it'd be great to just run the table here and go undefeated in our non-conference portion of the season. Uh, that would definitely be the way to start it off. But the nice thing is, so here we go, on the road at Penn State. So, again, this isn't a traditional power, but it is on the road against a Power 5 team. Uh, this is definitely a scary kind of game to go into, especially, you know, they're going to be wanting to play big against that top 10 team, and they do. They, they get the five-point win. So they took advantage of us. We're on the road. Uh, our best guy on the inside is a little bit hampered there with an injury, and Penn State knocks us out of the ranks of the undefeated. So not a terrible loss, but definitely not one that I would want to take. That's not the way I'd like to lose the first game of the year. I prefer to take care of uh, all of my games against unranked opponents. But uh, road losses do happen, especially when you're missing starters. So that's what happened to us there. Let's pick it up and hopefully bounce back in this next one. Let's see. That's going to be oh, going to be tough to bounce back that quickly. Headed on the road to Florida State, who's ranked number four in the nation, and Higgins is still injured. So, this one's going to be a test. Uh, and this is one of those, you know, I talk about like games you should win, games that are, are boosters, all, all these different things. Like, this would be a great win, but this is, this is probably in the category of should lose. You know, if we were completely healthy, I would say this is. It was still a probably a loss, but uh, not being healthy, this will be difficult. But you never know. Uh, Marquette Holmes is just a flat-out scorer. We've got depth. Uh, we could do something. Oh, <laughs> look at Holmes. Speak of the devil, 28 points, and we take the six-point win against the Florida State Seminoles. On the Guys, that's a top five in the country 
team, and we beat them on the road without one of our best two players. So that's what this team is capable of doing. That's why it is frustrating to lose to Penn State. But, you know, if I can only win one of those two games, uh, neither of them are a bad loss. There's only one of them that's a huge resume-building win. So I will take that trade off. That's fine by me. What a win. Man. So that really shows you that we we should be able to compete with any team in the country, anywhere in the country. Uh, That's what we've built here in in year five. So all the tools are available at a school like this. Once you get a couple things in your favor, my recruiting is starting to get decent. My conference prestige here is good. Uh, So, you know, you can make this happen most anywhere, guys. Maybe not Florida (laughs) A&M. That's a bit of a stretch. They're pretty awful, at least in this game. So now we got Texas Rio Grande coming on into Devlin Fieldhouse. We're now ranked number 11. Hold them off. Stetson with the double-double. Lado had himself a big game. Uh, and the good news is, at this point, Higgins is completely healthy. If you remember, at the Florida State game, he still had three days left to get back. So we've passed that mark. Higgins is healthy. We are back to 100% as a team uh, and marching back towards, uh, you know, at this point, we're definitely uh, looking like an NCAA type of team. And now we're looking at, you know, how high up in the seeding can we get? Or does the season turn around and we lose some games and, you know, it becomes more of a struggle. But uh, I think I think figuring out what kind of seeding we're going to be going after is the more likely scenario here. So we got a couple days off. Make sure we're good and rested and healed up. You know, you had a bad game with a guy with zero points and seven rebounds as one of your top three performers. Maris there only had 43 points as a team. Marquette Holmes can do that on a Tuesday. Got a nice long break here. So, of course, after the big win, we dropped to 15. But these early season rankings, you know, just like in real life, they fluctuate. They don't always make 100% uh, sense to everybody. But at the end of the day, they're really meaningless. It's it's what happens over the course of a season that really uh, defines who you're going to be and, and how you're going to do in that tournament. So now we got South Alabama. Uh, they have actually won a road game this year. So let's try to stop it from happening again. Yeah, took care of business there. 26, Lado, Marquette, Holmes, and who was it, Jones? Was that the third the third big performer? All right, another pretty big road game. Oh, no, no, no. Sorry, I got confused. I saw South Florida play in Texas, and I'm like, God, well, this is nuts. What kind of a non-conference schedule did we get ourselves into? But that was South Florida. Threw me off for a second there. The, the color of the, the teams is pretty similar. All right, so we're still 11-1. and one. Getting on toward Christmas here. South Florida, did South Florida win that game? Wow. I mean, if they were in a tournament, unless that was prior to this tournament starting, but you never know. All right, simulate through the Saturday, see what happens on Christmas Day. See if we'll be playing. No games slated. A couple of scouting reports. Couldn't get any kind of gifts in the recruiting department. So we're probably getting towards, uh, these are probably our last couple of non-conference games. Uh, Before we get into that American Athletic Conference, good old AAC, uh, and really start testing what we're made of. We dropped again all the way down to 17th. That's not an issue, as I explained. I'm not worried about it. Uh, The bigger problem would be losing games. So focus on the court and all the rankings and seedings and all that off-the-court stuff does take care of itself. We just got to go out and win. 
So let's see what happens here against Loyola Marymount. <laughs> yeah, it's a good start. And we keep on rolling. Look at whew, 26 and 14. Is that what he had? God, I love it when Higgins goes off like that. I mean, that's just doing work like a man. 26 and 15. Goodness gracious. He's a beast. I mean, Team Holmes or Team Higgins, it's almost like it's irrelevant at this point. They're both ridiculous all the time. So definitely a good problem to have. And still both juniors. So that's also a really, really nice situation to be in. All right, last game of 2029. Guys, we are headed into 2030. So, 12 and 1, your Tulane Green Wave headed into conference play for the 2029 2030 season. And, guys, we are 100% living up to what I'd hoped we'd do. We did have the one loss against Penn State on the road, but it was totally overshadowed by our massive road victory against the number four Florida State Seminoles. And this is looking like everything I'd hoped that we would do this season, regardless of the transfers. Uh, we are making it happen here, guys. Keep slipping back in those rankings. But keep winning games. Keep winning games on the court. And uh, the voters will come around on our ranking. We'll get there. <clears throat> Alright, so we started off with the Shockers. Always a tough matchup. Always a good quality team. Luckily, we are at home. And we take care of business. Another double-double for somebody. I didn't, didn't quite catch it. Higgins something. So we are rolling right now. Took care of Wichita State at home. We'll still have to get them on the road. We still got, you know, UConn, UC. Uh, I think there's a handful of other, at least one or two other pretty pretty solid schools in this conference. I know SMU makes the tournament here and there. So right away, headed on the road. Yeah, Chris, we we were up to rank 10 or 11. Well, when we were ranked 11th, we we haven't lost since then. Uh, we beat number four Florida State on the road, slid back to 15th, and then a couple more wins, and we've slid back to 17th or 18th now. But that's what I was saying. That that ranking's really irrelevant. Win on the court, and that'll take care of itself. But now we've got a huge challenge here, going into the number 14 Connecticut Huskies on the road. They are nine and four on the season. 0-1 uh, in conference play, but this is going to be a tough, tough matchup. <clears throat> so all we got to do, you know, we're going to get our shots at these teams that are ranked a little bit higher than us. You know, win and we'll move up, and that'll take care of itself. Lose, and, uh, you know, maybe the voters had it right. So let's see if we can prove some people wrong in Connecticut. Yeah! <laughs> in a big way! 22 points. Uh, it seemed like Higgins and Ledeau and a handful of other guys are kind of pissed off about this ranking and took it out on UConn. Put a beat down on the Huskies on the road. So, another great looking win. Uh, can't say enough about it. It's an absolutely great win. Uh, the only thing it does, like it, it gives me... It gives me, uh, it makes the Penn State loss harder and harder to accept the more that we go on the road and pull off these huge wins and show what we're made of. Uh, you know, hopefully that Penn State loss was just uh, an anomaly. So there we go from 18th back up to 12th. Uh, of course, not going to make a difference as we got to go out and still put the ball in the hoop against your East Carolina Pirates, six and seven on the year. So. Definitely a should win. This would be really ugly to lose it at home against a bad team. And we do by three. So that's just every bit of everything we did good against Florida State, every bit of good we did against UConn. Uh, we just turned around and lost it all there, giving away a home game to East Carolina. Just a brutal loss. No excuse for that. 
it's really pathetic. It'll really hurt us come uh, the tournament when it's time to start seeing, you know, what seed we ultimately end up with. So that one was brutal. You can't be dropping games like that if you want to go far. And that's the difference between, like, your Elite Eight, your Final Four teams versus a team like Tulane, who's probably a second round, hopefully a Sweet uh, sweet 16 team. Uh, Final Four teams don't lose games like that. They just don't. And Elite Eight teams really don't either. You know, once you hit the Elite Eight, you're talking to, for most years, you're talking about eight teams that could legitimately win the national championship. Um, this is a good team, but you can't be dropping games like that. You can't, you can't be that inconsistent. And for a team full of upperclassmen, they shouldn't be. So we took care of business there, Higgins, with 16-16 and 16 against a clearly overmatched Houston Cougars team. Um, so we get back on the right track, but still really, really disappointed by an absolutely brutal loss at home to East Carolina. Nah, not undefeated. Not even in conference play. <clears throat> So we're four games into conference play. Uh, did have the big win against UConn on the road. Uh, got back on track there against Houston. But uh, we really need to avoid any more really horrid losses like that going forward. So now we're headed on the road to play against the Temple Owls. And we take care of business there, eight-point win, with Holmes doing the majority of the scoring. He dropped 16 on him. Let's bounce over and see what that box score looks like. Let's for a little check-in here. So Ladeau was 16, Holmes was 16, Jones and Higgins doing their thing. Higgins with the double-double. I mean, the usual, right? Isn't this what we basically always do? Jay Malone doing work off the bench. Higgins had relatively limited minutes. For him to put up 14 rebounds in 20 minutes, it's just ridiculous. Let's take our midseason look at our stats here, guys. So, you know, we can see Holmes with 13, almost 14 a game. Ladeau with a little over 14 a game. So, Chris Ladeau, the senior power forward, leading the way uh, in the scoring department. Of course, Higgins doing what he does, averaging a double-double which is ridiculous. Stetson and Holmes with uh, 5.3 and 4 assists per game, respectively. You know, Calvin Harris not getting a ton of minutes, doing all right when he's in. Uh, same for Jay Malone. Would like to see the rebounds creep up a little bit there. Uh, but it, you know, it looks like Higgins and Ladeau are kind of uh, just big vacuums, so I don't know where he's going to find the rebounds to get. Look at Higgins, even 2.3 blocks a game. This guy's got to be a first-team all-conference player this year. He's having a huge year. Averaging a double-double. That's ridiculous. All right, <clears throat> a couple days off here as we approach the end of January. Still ranked number 12 as of right now, despite the terrible loss to East Carolina. And here we go, matchup of top 20 teams. Tulsa coming into Tulane. Uh, Tulsa has got a handful of losses, only 2-3 and three in the AAC. So, rocky start to, be, to the beginning of conference play. You wonder... Uh, did they have a cakewalk through the non-conference, or if they just hit a rough patch, have they hit an injury? Uh, but we're going to find out when the Golden Hurricanes meet the Green Wave. So, woo, they might have had a cupcake. Or right, look at Higgins, twenty and fifteen. I don't know how else to say it. He's ridiculous, man. What? An absolute beast of a center. Really, really good, guys. Uh, so, take care of another ranked opponent. So that should give us three, I think, three wins against top 25 teams so far this year. So, despite a couple of questionable losses, uh, we've got some nice wins. Just bouncing over here to check on 
our emails to see if we had any new commitments or if they were just scouting reports. Got being out of budget, we may not be able to get convince any of these guys with outstanding offers to come here. Uh, this may end up being a two man class, but uh, I will gladly take the quality uh, over the numbers. You know, we got two really quality players. I'm not going to waste scholarships on nonsense. You know, for next year, we can always just uh, try to divvy up our budget a little bit differently and avoid that issue so that we can spend a little bit more. Uh, because if we were still making calls, if we were still being able to do visits, I don't have any doubt we would have brought in at least one or two more players. But uh, when you can't even make calls anymore, it, it really puts you in a tough position. So here we go. UC, usually a pretty solid team. Looks like they're having a rough year. This is a home game. This is a should win. And we do almost 30 points, but there was Marquette Holmes with an injury. So I did not see the box score. I was too distracted by our best scoring guard uh, getting hurt. So let's hope this... All right, strained abdominal. He's still almost 90%. This will be about a week and a half. Uh, not going to be... Not great, but you know we'll deal with that. Higgins, 15 points again. So... Uh, the nice thing is, it appears that Jeff Lease is the only player in a really rotten mood on the squad. You know, Haywood and Ladeau could be better. But, you know, we've we fixed all those morale problems uh, that we've had on and off. Or that at least I've had on and off on a number of different saves. So, uh, winning tends to solve a lot of problems. You know, it's hard to be upset and angry and fighting with your teammates when you're going 18-2. and two, uh, Especially if you got, you know, a group of good guys. So... A really, this is a really nice roster. I'm always sad to see when I start a save at a new school. I'm always, it's always interesting, but then I'm always sad to see that first group of players that you recruit graduate. So you can take a look, see how they did. You know, you recruited these guys, see their career stats, all that sort of stuff. Uh, but it's still sad to see him leave. You know, you want these guys around, and you know, Stetson, Ladeau, uh, those guys will be gone after this year. Agalia is back, so time to start making fun of him again, it would appear. See if we can catch any kind of uh, Kentucky Wildcat losses in here. So, in the meantime, the Tulane Green Wave headed down to Central Florida, the CFE Arena, to play the Knights of UCF. So, a road game against a decent opponent. You know, they're not ranked, but they are decent. But we take care of business. Andrew Jones, the freshman, leading the way. The injured Marquette Holmes also went over 20 points. So the abdominal strain obviously didn't hold him back too awfully much. Uh, over 40 points. I think over 45 points between the two of them. And we get out of uh, Central Florida UCF with a win pretty easily. What's up, Just for Watching? Glad you could catch us live, man. Now, I try to get in here and get this at least once a week or so. But Agalia wasn't even watching. He's just talking trash because that's what he does. Look at this. Marquette Holmes, a quarterfinalist for the Norton. Let's see where he is on this list. All right, so he's right at the bottom of the list. But, hey, he made the final 30. Let's see if he can keep on doing work. Uh, he's going to need to fight through this minor injury and hopefully... Uh, he'll be able to do that and keep pouring in points the way he does. You know, I think he's last we looked, he was averaging nearly 14 a game. Wasn't quite the team high, but pretty solid. Yeah, team Holmes, I mentioned it earlier while you were gone, Agalia. Team Holmes and Team Higgins, I don't know how much it matters anymore. They're both ridiculous. If you missed it, Higgins, last we checked, was averaging a double-double. And where is he at? Right here. You just look for the guy averaging a double-double, and then you can find Higgins. That's how we do that. So he's just barely staying above 10 rebounds a game, but uh, still counts. So Higgins averaging the double-double, uh, throwing in 2.2 blocks a game just for good measure and a steal. So he's 100% an all-conference player. Lado leading the way points-wise. Andrew Jones, the freshman, you know, after having a couple of guys transfer out at that position, that was obviously frustrating, but this guy is getting close to 13 a game himself, along with nearly six rebounds, three assists. So the future of this team is definitely bright with guys like that. Uh, Kevin London here is only getting about 11 minutes a game. So 
we're not going to hold this stat line against them, especially when the inside is this loaded. Yeah, Ladeau's filling it up. Holmes is good. Higgins is good. This team is good. Uh, that's why, you know, that's why I was saying I, I had high hopes for them. I, I think this is still, despite the guys they, that we lost in the off season, this is still a team that has the ability to be a Sweet 16 team. Uh, now they just got to go out and do it. So here we go on the road. We took care of Wichita State at home. Now we head on the road, and they shocked us. Higgins couldn't quite get the double-double. Andrew Jones, the freshman, couldn't get it done. Calvin Harris off the bench tried. Uh, Holmes, Stetson, Ladeau, nowhere to be found. And we fall to a very, very mediocre Wichita State team. So our third loss of the year, <clears throat> second conference loss. And we've had good wins, but our losses have just been such frustrating losses. Games that we should be winning. Yeah, Agalia, yeah, that's what losses like the one that we just took at Wichita State, uh, those are the kind of losses that make me think this team and it's the inconsistency it very well could be around a 32 type of team. Well, I would like for it to be more. Uh, I think there's definitely Sweet 16 talent here. Uh, but we just dropped some puzzling games. How do you lose to, Penn How do you lose to East Carolina at home? Uh, it's baffling to me. So... All right, South Florida coming in. So, once again, one of these games that I would like to win. I'd like to say it's a should-win kind of game, but we seem to be losing those all of a sudden. So, let's not let's not get too far ahead of ourselves here. South Florida Bulls, two-lane green wave. 18-point win. Get out of here with that. All right, so 20 and 3, 8 and 2, despite some, uh, it's poor coaching. Speak for yourself there, Galia. Hey, remind, remind everybody in chat, how'd your number one seed Kentucky Wildcats do in the NCBA last year? How'd y'all do in that tournament? Specifically the game against the 16 seed, did, did you... Did you win that game, or or did you lose to the Sweet 16? Or to the C not Sweet 16. I don't want to give you too much credit there. Did you beat the 16 seed, or did they, in fact, beat your number one seed? I'm having trouble remembering. While Agalia prepares to uh, tell everyone in chat uh, how hard his team flamed out in the NCBA tournament, we're going to move on to some real competition here against the Memphis Tigers on the road. So, this is a decent Memphis team. They've almost won 15 games. It's at Memphis. This will definitely be a tough one. And it's a, it's another tough loss. That's the first loss, though, that we've gone through that I haven't just wanted to throw up afterwards. I mean, Penn State wasn't terrible. But Wichita State and especially East Carolina were just awful. So, you know, a loss at Memphis, that's going to happen. Not worried about it. <laughs> you can turn your Power 5 school into a mid-major. Uh, I've tried that before. You usually get fired before you can get it done. Uh, but if you need any notes on how to be terrible at the game, uh, I can definitely give you those in a separate stream. Uh, this is the one where I like to be competent and try to win and, and do things right. But uh, trust me, I can lose as well. Oh. You know, those... The, the top rankings for the recruits, they're usually not going to move a whole lot until right toward the end of August. And then I think again when the in-home visits start. Uh, so here we go. A home game against Southern Methodist. Let's see if we can take care of this. So we're 20-4, and 8-3 and three in conference. So we played 11 conference games, and I think this is an 18-game conference schedule. So the Mustangs in the Green Wave doing battle in New Orleans, and the Green Wave prevail, led by the freshman Jones. Marquette Holmes was also uh, one of the top performers, one of the top scorers. Hey, I turned that Florida A&M stream, uh, I turned that into something. That was a true prestige school, and I 
didn't they make the tournament the last year I was there? So, for a two prestige school to make the NCAA tournament, that's no joke. I mean, I was at least in the NIT a handful of years. All right, UConn, now unranked. Going to come in and see if they can take their revenge after we beat them at their place earlier in the year. And we hold them off. One by eight. Looks like Lado leading the way. Once again, Marquette Holmes looking good. <laughs> hey, it wasn't that I didn't get anybody. I, I had an, my first decent offer. You know, it was time to move on. That team was still set up. They still had plenty of players. You know, the reason that they didn't get any recruits is they had such a good roster. There, there's some reasoning. There's some logic behind the way that stuff works, guys. Uh, when you've got a good roster, the same with this Tulane team. The reason that I had such a difficult time recruiting this is because I've got such a stacked roster. And you look at what's going to be coming back next year. Yeah, we're losing Stetson and Ledeau, but we've still got Haywood. We picked up a good point guard recruit. Uh, we picked up a good center recruit here, which was key because Higgins could always go pro. Malone's definitely graduating. Uh, but other than that, I mean, look, who's going to want to come in and try to fight Kevin London for playing time? Uh, the way Andrew Jones is playing, who's going to want to fight him for playing time? Calvin Harris and Marquette Holmes, you're not getting on the court at these positions. So that's why we were able to bring in a point guard and a center and nothing else. Nobody else is going to see the court. That's how it happens every time. That's why your garbage Kentucky school got all the top recruits last year. Your roster was awful. Well, watch what happens this year when you've actually got a couple of high-ranked recruits up there. Everybody's going to bail on you. The game's very cyclical. It does a good job of, of replicating that. Players are going to want to go where they got playing time to be offered. Yeah, you can't redshirt those guys that are in the top 25. Uh, they will definitely go pro without even playing. The guys that go pro in this, it is not based on performance throughout the year. It is based on their ranking. It's based on their recruiting ranking. Those top Five to ten guys, you can virtually guarantee they're leaving. Uh, when you get into that 10 to 25 range, uh, those guys can leave at any time. And beyond top 25, I haven't had one leave early that I can verify. It may have happened. Uh, I just haven't like recognized it. So here we go. Let's see if we can get our revenge at East Carolina. No, they beat us again. Uh, Josh Flippin. So I don't know what it is about that squad. Bad matchup. Maybe they run some kind of weird zone. Uh, no telling, but they sweep us for the season, which is not a good look. Oh, Gonzaga loses to Pepperdine. Look at that. You know, I thought it was. I had it bad. Look at that. Pepperdine seven and eighteen beat the number two Gonzaga Bulldogs. Wow. So, guys, it could be worse. It could definitely be worse. All right, so you can always have teams with bad matchups. Let's just hope we don't run into them in the uh, conference tournament because that certainly hasn't worked. You know, Whatever it is against them. If we've got to play them again, I need to check a scouting report and see if there's anything we can change up to try to get by them. Uh, but hopefully we just avoid that roadblock for whatever reason. You know, at this point, East Carolina really shouldn't be a roadblock, but still are things that happened. Pepperdine did just beat Gonzaga. On the road against the Houston Cougars. Woo, 105. Yikes. Somebody was angry at the loss and took it out on the basket. Putting in 105 points against a conference opponent is no joke at all. So we ought to have two or three conference games left here. 
I believe hopefully we still get Memphis at home. It would be nice to get a little bit of revenge there. Um, trying to think who else who else we have in conference. We've got our two against UConn. We got our two against Wichita State. I don't know another one against SMU maybe another one against Temple. Okay. And I think we've got Memphis again. I'm pretty sure. So, whoa, uh -oh, the Houston coach is on the hot seat. <laughs> Sorry about that. So, the Temple Owls, the Tulane Green Wave. Oh, shoot. I unchecked it before I did the. All right, not going to pop up. We're going to miss that one. 12 and 4. So, we won. I uh, don't know what the score was. I don't know who did what, but I know we won. Let's see here. 94 to 66. So, we put a hurting on him. Fifteen and sixteen for Higgins, Kevin London. This freshman dropping twenty. I mean, who who's gonna want to come in and play? Try to beat out London and Jones for playing time. Man, along with the center and point guard we just brought in, along with Calvin Harris, uh, Marquette Holmes hopefully coming back for yet another year. And don't forget Higgins is no guarantee to go pro. It wouldn't shock me. I mean, he's averaging a double-double. He was a top 25 recruit. He definitely could go pro, but it's not a guarantee. So if he sticks around, man, this is going to be a scary, scary team going into that following year. Have a good mix of talent, and experience at the point guard spot, shooting guard spot would be absolutely loaded. Uh, small forward and power forward with Jones and London there. And then if Higgins stuck around, along with the guy I recruited to back him up, whew, that would be nasty. But you never know. It's hard to pro project that far ahead. Uh, what we do know is we're in our last day of February, and we're on the road against the Tulsa Golden Hurricanes. Number 12, Tulane, versus number 22, Tulsa. So we're a little bit higher ranked, but they've got the home court advantage in this one. Ah, oh, look at that. Another 100-point game, folks. Higgins with 15. Holmes with 21. Stetson trying for his own little 10.7 assist. Three assists short of the double-double, but we drop 100 on another in-conference opponent. Guys, that's a, that's a good win. Well, some of these wins are really taking the sting out of some of the losses. Uh, but we're 17 games in. we got one left. And then it's time that you know, the losses count. The losses will really sting in the postseason. So hopefully we don't experience any. Uh, that's the best way to avoid that pain. Uh, of course, there's only uh, one team in each conference that can do it for the conference tournament. And only one team in the country is really going to be happy at the end of the year. So... Uh, I've seen Stranger Things. You know, I, I don't, I don't think that. Yeah, RPI, we're, we should be looking good here. Uh, so uh, the last game that we actually have is Tulane at UC. So let's get this taken care of. So yeah, this could still very much be a, a first round flame out, a second round flame out type of team. Uh, but anybody can make a run. Anybody can make a run. Can we win on the road against the UC Bearcats? Yes, we can. Marquette Holmes with 30. Double-double Higgins with another 18 and 14, uh, 18 point, 14 rebound performance. So my man D.D. Higgins living up to the name. Let's check out conference standings real quick. Well, first let's check the dashboard. Make sure that these, this season, uh, this regular season, is actually over. Yes, so now we've got the AAC tournament. All right, so Higgins is back, guys. <laughs> One more year. One more year. Wow. He's, they're going to have to make a statue of him in New Orleans. B.B. Higgins coming back for his senior year. 
guys, you gotta be kidding me. This is ridiculous. Man. He's gonna be... Between him and Holmes. Goodness gracious. Take a look at the conference standings. So we are leading the way at 14-4. and four. Won the conference by two games. Houston just terrible. East, ECU was actually 500 in the conference. So they went 7-9 and nine against the rest of the conference, which isn't great. Bro, Holmes wasn't in the top 25 for recruits. He's never, I'm telling you, those top 25 guys are the ones you got to worry about going pro. If they weren't a five-star top 25 recruit, they're not going pro. So Holmes coming back was virtually guaranteed. All he can do is transfer. So I don't have to worry about him. Higgins was the one that might leave. And, of course, now he's coming back for his senior year. So I'm telling you, outside the top 25, you don't have to worry about him. It doesn't matter how they perform. You know, these guys putting up 30 points a game. I've had guys that were just absolute studs, first team all conference in like the ACC every year. They never leave because they weren't top 25 recruits. It's just a, it's a weird quirk in the system. The And maybe it's one of those things where like the NBA is drafting on potential over talent, you know, over production. You take these guys like, like a Tyler Hansborough, who you know is, you know, a great college player, but might have more limited potential in the pros and that ends up being a four-year player uh you know i think that's what you're looking at when you're looking at guys outside the top 25 yeah they might be really good college players uh, but the pros might not be all that excited about them that's why they're drafting your you know your guy that was a top 10 player and you redshirted him because you just didn't have room for him to play that's why he's still getting drafted he's got all that talent the pros are going crazy for it so those recruiting rankings a lot of times are based on i think potential uh, just like anybody in the NCBA, go look at my, my Louisville Cardinal team. I got a shooting guard named Norvell, I think it is. Uh, he was a top 25 recruit, but he didn't do well in any of the camps or anything. So he's got great potential ratings on anything, and he could definitely go pro early, but he's barely even in my starting lineup. So the rankings are really based a lot on potential, and then you look at camp results and those sorts of things to figure out where the current ability stands. So that's my rant about that for the day. But no, I don't have to worry about Holmes going pro. It's not gonna it was never gonna happen. So now we're just waiting to see who our opponent is. Uh, in the NCBA, I had five scholarships. Uh, I waited until this week to actually send them out. So I think I made four offers this week, and I'm still looking at one other position to send an offer out. I'm pretty sure I didn't make any offers prior to this week. I'm sorry, there's a little bug flying around in here. I may have made one offer. I'm not certain previously, uh, but no, I have five scholarships. Yeah, uh, this game it usually sticks to realism, uh, but I know in these like conference tournaments, uh, along with like the preseason tournaments, uh, a lot of times I don't think they default to like you know I don't think like the old school Big East that always ran in MSG. I don't think it would default to something like that. I think it would default to like just a generic Big East court. So. Yeah, I know you're keeping spreadsheets over there, keeping tabs on what I'm doing, trying to learn from the best. I get it. I mean, I'd be trying to copy what I was doing, too. All right, so we do draw the Tulsa Golden Hurricanes in the first round of this AAC tournament, which is going to be a tough matchup coming straight out of the gate. You know, This is a very good team. They were ranked at one point during the season. Uh, luckily, our 2029-2030 Nemesis East Carolina got dropped out by Temple. You can see Memphis here has moved on. UConn has moved on. Can we advance in this first game of the postseason against Tulsa? Yes. 10 points. Mark at Holmes. B.B. Higgins. Love to see it. So now we get to go against the Connecticut Huskies. 
So let's see how the other game goes. Yeah, that was a tough draw, uh, but we took care of business. Uh, but, you know, I mean, if we expect to win games in the NCAA tournament, we need to be winning games like that. So here you can see the Temple Owls actually took out Memphis in the other semifinal. So here we go against UConn, the semifinal of the American Athletic Conference Tournament. And they took us out by 12. Higgins did his part. Ladeau did his part. Uh, Marquette Holmes, where you at, man? Where you at, Marquette Holmes? So we had a cakewalk it there and couldn't get past the Connecticut Huskies. We fall in the semifinals of the American Athletic Conference Tournament. And the Temple Owls hang a banner. So that's definitely a missed opportunity. I know somebody was saying, hey, you know, we could be a three seed if we win this conference tournament. That didn't happen. At this point, this should totally just be a four or five seed team, I think. <clears throat> but let's check it out. Hey, you might be right. Maybe they were playing it at UConn. Well, uh, I like when other people can come up with my excuses for me. Man, it was a home game. I don't know what you want me to do. We're playing it on their court. We're going to watch this show. Let's see how the draw goes. Yeah, the little... The, the music or whatever, that's loud. Playing games. Arizona State, North Florida, Omaha, Northern Iowa. UConn is a play-in game. You can't be losing to these playing game teams. Taking on Rutgers. And then another AAC team in Memphis taking on the Lobos of New Mexico in a play-in game. So your one seeds, Creighton Blue Jays, Oklahoma State taking on Notre Dame as a 15. I've never seen a school like Notre Dame get a 15. Uh, those 15s and 16s are usually reserved for small conference champions. Tulane did pull a three seed out, even dropping the semifinal against UConn we held on to a three seed and we'll play West Carolina in the first round and Utah State gets the four in the Philadelphia region so filling it out uh, Marquette not to be confused with Marquette Holmes although I do think Marquette Holmes solo could probably pull a five seed uh, they'll take on the New Mexico State running Rebels Is that uh, Rebels I, I can't remember UAB versus, oh, Florida State. What a fall from grace. Guys, Florida State was ranked number four in the country when we beat them at their place. Wow. What a brutal year for them. You wonder if that's an injury or if they were just that overrated. Oh, Duke Louisville. Well, ACC matchup. Go Cards. Ooh. Be interested to see how that works out. Maryland and Pitt round out the Philadelphia region. So, in Indianapolis, the Michigan Wolverines, the Oregon Ducks, Oklahoma Sooners, and Wisconsin Badgers. Wow. We're going to call it as... This is almost like all west of the Mississippi, right? Is Michigan just east? There's nothing from the east coast in that, though. Butler, VCU, NC State, Minnesota, UCLA, Villanova. In Oklahoma City, the Texas A&M Aggies pull a one seed. UNC with the two, the Cuse with the three, Bama roll tide. Illinois at the five, TCU with six, Auburn. There's Temple. There's your American Athletic Conference winner. So that's a frustrating thing. You know, yeah, UConn in a play-in game. Temple is a ten seed. We're a three seed, and we couldn't win that tournament. It's just a bad, you know, one bad day, and you go home. But such is life in the in college basketball. So the Utes of Utah get a one seed in Oakland. Uh, there's your Mildcats of Kentucky. There's your Michigan State Spartans with a three. Your Gamecocks with a four. Arizona Wildcats, the real Wildcats in Oakland, pull the five seed. Uh, Belmont, who keeps stealing my recruits, with a six. All right, guys. So that's our NCAA field. Yeah, our RPI ranks 12th. <clears throat> so it fits right in with the three seed. All right. 
So it's time for us to get the NCAA tournament going. Uh, let's get through uh, the first two rounds, and then we'll do an overview. As always, you know, we'll get through the first two rounds, do an overview of what's happened to that point, and then we'll follow the rest as they go. All right. First Thursday and Friday of the tournament. Best sporting, best two sporting days of the year. So we got to take on Western Carolina. The Catamounts. All right. So uh, there's you know the Connecticut Huskies moving on, beat out the number twenty two Butler Bulldogs. Very interesting. So, let's see if we can avoid a first round shock. And we do. Nice little 19 point victory. You know, that's that's what you want to see your team doing. So, a couple other American teams in action. Memphis and Temple. We've got a team incident, really. Really. That this is when you choose to have an incident. Marquette Holmes and Andrew Jones, two of our starters. You guys have got to be kidding me. <sighs> All right, Holmes backed off right away. There is something wrong. All right. And Jones, it took a little bit, but he also backed off. So hopefully that doesn't linger. Yeah, I don't know, man. If I get, I'd love to do that, Chris. But I, part of me is very superstitious. So, like, if I did good and like got all the way to the championship or something, and then simulated it and lost, I'd blame myself. But first things first, guys, we got to get past UAB. This is a six seed. Six seeds are no joke. This is going to be a quality team. Exactly. You spend all this time and then you're done in one click. That's exactly how it goes. All right, so here's our big time second round game, Tulane versus UAB. Marquette Holmes, double double Higgins, Andrew Jones with 16, and we pull off a 16 point win in round two, guys. So back to back, sweet 16 for your Tulane Green Wave. Man, it's a good feeling. It's a sweet feeling. Back in the Sweet 16. Man, oh man. Let's jump out to the NCAA tournament here. And Philadelphia region. So, uh, this is straight chalk. Creighton, Utah State, Oklahoma State, Tulane. Uh, my Cardinals did their thing, took care of the Dukies. And then fell, you know, a 10 seed, fell into the 2 seed, Oklahoma State. There's there's no shame in that. They they played them tight. Over in Indy, Villanova, another real Wildcat team, took out the first-seeded Michigan Wolverines and UConn. So, you know, UConn, like, that's totally redeeming the loss that I had to them. Uh, I think the American just got underrated this year. UConn took out number 22, Butler. Uh, here they are taking out a four seed in Wisconsin. Took them out, you know, 10 point win. So it's a nine versus a 12 over here. And then on the other side of the bracket, the Minnesota Gophers squeak by the number two seed, Oregon Ducks. So this region is craziness. You, got, you still got the three, the Oklahoma Sooners with a three seed, but Indy is full of entertainment. Over in Oklahoma City, Texas A&M, the one seed. A uh, small upset here with the five over the four. Nothing crazy. Excuse me. Two seed, three seed over here. Um, yeah, the AAC's got a couple teams in the Sweet 16, that's for sure. So, 
the last region, the Oakland region. <laughs> Agalia, you still watching, buddy? They're taking after you. I mean, this loss isn't as embarrassing as your loss, but... <laughs> All right, so uh, Utah, the one, the real, era, the real Wildcats of Oakland, Arizona took out, oh, Toledo upset South Carolina, and then Arizona moved on. So they'll be taking on Utah, and then I don't know what happened to the two seed here. It was, oh, it looks like Kentucky got blown out by Harvard. That makes total sense. Um, and then they lost to Boise State, which, you know, Boise State's a lot tougher opponent than Kentucky. So uh, this all makes perfect sense. Uh Belmont did take out Michigan State, so lots of fun out in Oakland, guys. But there's your Sweet 16. So, looking pretty interesting. Looking pretty interesting. Oh, goodness gracious. Let's jump back over to... I don't want tournaments. Do I just have to choose Game Grid? Yeah, for American. All right. <clears throat> so into the Sweet 16. Let's see what happens here. So we got to go against the two seed. Uh, once you get to the Sweet 16, it's legit. You got to bring it every game. So can we take the two-lane green wave to the Elite Eight. Let's find out. First, we're going to find out if UConn can make it there over Villanova. No. Another team of Wildcats that actually knows how to play basketball took out UConn. All right. Can we do it? Yes, we can. Let's get it. Boys, let's get your B.B. Higgins. Let's get up Marquette Holmes. Chris Ledeau, the senior. You can't go out like this. Let's get that Elite Eight, guys. Let's get it. Boom! 15 points. Go home, Cowboys. Not going to happen. Woo! Boy, we're in the Elite Eight. Look at this. Look at this. Our starters just went. Higgins did nothing. Four personal fouls. So the refs tried to take us out of the game early. Uh, Jay Malone said, uh-uh, I'm picking up the slack. Mark at Holmes, you know, he did his thing. He was This was just a total team effort. They took our, our big man off the court, so everybody else stepped it up. You know, Other guys started grabbing rebounds. Jay Malone could finally get some. Holmes even stepped up with seven rebounds. I mean, he was, I mean, he was definitely playing ball. Definitely playing ball. So, heck of a win for us. Shoot, even Lice. You know, the, the guy that I, I thought would be a pretty good recruit, and he's had a bad rating, but he got on the floor for 10 minutes. Got a nice little plus five rating. I don't know why London played such limited minutes, and, and Lice got so much. But you know what? As long as we're winning, I'll take it. I'm not going to question that. Uh, looking good, guys. We're in the lead eight. Took out. The Oklahoma State Cowboys by 15. Yeah, Malone, I mean, he's just been huge the whole time. You got to have guys like that that can step into big minutes and produce for you. You can't have them blank out. Whew. <clears throat> All right. Well, we've taken Tulane to the Elite Eight. So now it's getting real. Now it's getting real. The Creighton Blue Jays. Whew. Well, I'm still riding this high. Like before I get all like before anything happens. You know, let's whew, should we take a look around? Nah, let's let's go ahead and sim this. What do y'all think? Do we have anything? Oh my god. Do y'all see that? I think that was Villanova versus Oklahoma. I think the score was 110 to 109. All right, I got to go look at that. So let's see what happened here so far. Utah beat Arizona. Boise State beat Belmont. What region are we in? All right, that's us. Indy. It's Nova over UConn. 
Yeah, Villanova, Oklahoma, 110 to 109. Wow. What an NCAA game is that? Could you imagine, like, sitting at a bar with a big group of people watching this game go on and the nine seed pulls out the win, 110 to 109 in the NCAA tournament? Wow. Illinois took out a one seed. Syracuse took out the two. And here it's Utah and Boise State. Big stuff happening, guys. Big stuff happening. We're in the Elite Eight. <clears throat> oh, click to see if it was overtime. Good point. Good point. Uh, yeah, it was an overtime game. That's a lot of points in overtime. I wonder if that was. I wonder if the game takes into consideration multiple overtimes. Because look, I mean, I'd have a hard time believing they scored that in five minutes each or whatever. So it could have been multiple overtimes, but I mean, what a game. That's got to be one of those all-time great kind of games. Like You remember where you're at when it happens kind of games. All right, the nerves are definitely going now. Here we go, game grid. Tulane and Creighton. The Green Wave and the Blue Jays. Ah, oh, they got us. 13 points. Higgins tried. Holmes didn't show up. Harris with 10. Stetson with 9. Uh, but just couldn't get over that hump, guys. God. Couldn't get over the hump. Creighton got us by 13. Oh, absolutely brutal plus minus for Higgins. Minus 21. He played 31 minutes. Got 12 points, 8 rebounds. Uh, Holmes only played 11 minutes and fouled out. So uh, they took our big score right off the court. Uh, Harris in 30 minutes could only muster 10 points. Four assists, not bad. Uh, Jones, the freshman, he's he scored in double digits, but otherwise played like a freshman. Um, you know, Not a whole lot else happening. Stetson couldn't hit double digits anywhere. Stetson honestly had a really poor performance out of a senior point guard. Nine points, five turnovers, two assists. That's not getting it done. Yeah, even if they were the number one team, like if you want to make a Final Four, you're going to have to beat a number one team at some point. Uh, and we just could not find a way to make it work. I'm actually pretty happy with London. Seven points, six rebounds, three assists in 14 minutes. That's a good game. Harris played well. I mean, he did play a lot of minutes, but he played well in, in those minutes. Uh, so, really, Stetson was a big disappointment. <clears throat> uh, Holmes in foul trouble obviously held us back. But that's how the 2029-2030 season ends for your Tulane Green Wave. But still, big-time Elite Eight. Big-time Green Wave. Let's see real quick. Uh, I want to see something. So NCAA history, guys, round of Sweet 16s, it was only one. So this year, this team had never been to the Sweet 16 before we took them. So we just went to Sweet 16s in back-to-back -back years and then made the Elite Eight. So everything we're doing at this school is absolutely historic for them. I mean, this is, shoot, what were we in? We went first round, or I think we went second round, first round, Sweet 16. So this is our fourth. So I got them to three appearances in the NCAA tournament. So they'd only been to four NCAA tournaments in their history. Now they've been to, in the last two years, two Sweet 16s. So that's what we're doing with Tulane. Uh, that's the kind of turnaround that we're having here. Uh, Elite, if we had done better in the American, this team prestige would go insane. Uh, making the Elite Eight, but then having not, a not great appearance in the American Athletic Conference, uh, my guess is still around seven or eight team prestige points, something like that. Uh, had we won the American and made the Elite Eight, we might have broke 50. So this team's getting real legit really, really fast. So let's check out and see how the rest of this tournament goes. Let's sim the Sunday games. 
All right, so the Philadelphia region, Creighton's going to move on. Indianapolis, we know Villanova's moving on. Over here, Syracuse takes out Illinois. And in Oakland, Boise State takes out the Utes. So, guys, our finals have a one seed, a three seed, a nine, and a ten. What a final four. What a final four. This is going to be interesting. We got one more week to sim, and then uh, it, what'll really be interesting to see, you know, do we get big time job offers this season? Are people taking notice? Um, do we have any interest in that? I, I, I really don't. This team's, with Higgins coming back, man, this team should be ridiculous again. So, uh, no reason to go somewhere else and try to rebuild anything. This is a program that's absolutely rolling, picking up eight percent. Seven, eight prestige points every single year. Uh, Friday. Man, it's such a high to get to that Elite Eight with this team. And then just carpet ripped out right from underneath of you. So brutal. College, college basketball is so brutal like that. You know, you build a season of 40 games and then it's all just over in 40 minutes so it looked like the higher seeded teams there moved on I don't think we had any big upset there in that final four you know Cinderella the the glass slipper or whatever it's finally gone here we go Creighton and Syracuse uh, Creighton is a couple of people pointed out they're the number one overall team Syracuse was a borderline top 10 ranked team. So that is your national championship game and your national champions in the NCAA for 2030, Creighton Blue Jays. So there you have it. Uh, if you're going to go out in the Elite Eight, you might as well go out to the number one team in the nation and the eventual champion, Creighton Blue Jays. Uh, I am kind of frustrated. It seems like we still, we never had anybody else commit. So I, I do think that two-man recruiting class is going to be how it wraps up here because we we just ran out of budget. Uh, maybe this is a really, really good time to go and yell at the board of directors to increase our budget for next year. So let's go check out these awards. Let's see uh, what happens <laughs> So, in the entire association, here's your individual awards. And Jason Calton from Syracuse doing it all. Shannon Willis, the freshman for Creighton, did everything that Jason Calton didn't. And then Greg McDermott from Creighton. So, this is just Syracuse, Creighton, Syracuse, Creighton, Syracuse, Creighton. I guess they deserved it. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what else to say about it. Check out our All-Americans. Brendan Frazier right there. Shannon Willis. So then Rico Gilmore and Clarence Cooper, Michigan and Ohio State, the Big Ten, uh, collecting the rest of those All-American slots. Here's your second team All-Americans, Nova, Oklahoma State, Texas, Marquette, and Memphis. So, jumping over to the American. Individual awards. Your boy cards, the coach of the year. Uh, Connecticut had the freshman of the year and defensive player of the year, and Greg London out of Memphis is player of the year. All conference. Woo! Where's your boy? Double double Higgins. 12.8 points, 10.6 rebounds. Averaged a double double on the year. Threw in two assists, two blocks, and a steal a game just for good measure. Guys. BB Higgins, first team All American. Greg London, David Montague, Jamal Taylor, and Marcus Collins round that out. Who's defensive? Oh, Marcus Collins. I was going to say, I kind of had hoped that B.B. Higgins might be in the running for Defensive Player of the Year. Second team all-conference. Tulane taking over. Marquette Holmes, second team all-conference. Andrew Jones, the freshman, second team all-conference. Chris Ledeau, the outgoing senior, second team all-conference. So uh, our starters picked up four all-conference awards. 
Uh, Stetson, the senior point guard, our only starter that wasn't an all-conference player this year. So our history of being snubbed is officially over. That was for a team that didn't win the conference title. Um, well, that was pretty much domination at awards night. So looking good there, guys. That season was about everything I could have asked for. You know, it certainly could have been a second round flameout kind of year. Uh, and we ended up heading on to the Elite Eight. And we gave the eventual champs everything they wanted. That was, a, I think, a, a 13 point game. So, uh, you know, we didn't lose by 20 or 30 or anything like that. We were in it there. Uh, unfortunately, Holmes, one of our two best players, got into some foul trouble. And it just didn't work out for us. So, uh, you know, it happens. Nothing else to be said. So we're going to get a couple of things going here now that the games are over. Season review. Only four-point increase in prestige. So despite the Elite Eight, that poor showing in the conference tournament really held us back there. Uh, along with... A, a real lack of signature wins throughout the season. I think it, it felt like the Florida State win was big at the time. It ended up being meaningless. They ended up as an 11 seed or some nonsense. Uh, so we made the Elite Eight, uh, but you you just can't drop games in the conference tournament like that. Only four points school prestige increase. Let's see what kind of hiring, uh, what kind of job offers we get here. Not that I'd be interested, but it's always fun, you know, Stroke the ego a little bit. I only want to see the head coaching jobs. All right, Houston, that coach did end up getting fired. Virginia Tech, Wake Forest, Washington State. Uh, so now, guys, you see the Power Five, uh, the dregs of the Power Five uh, start coming in. Yeah, the, the prestige... Uh, the preseason tournaments I don't think matter as much as the postseason tournaments when it comes to prestige. Because I won my preseason tournament, and that just wasn't you know, it wasn't that big of a deal. Uh, so yeah, a couple of schools here that, that would be interesting. Uh, Virginia Tech probably being the most interesting, given that they have some decent facilities and academics. Uh, Wake Forest is one of those schools... I don't know, man. Wake Forest would be fun to turn around. It's one of those schools that, that has some history in the ACC, and they just never really got there. Yeah, I'll turn it back off in a second. Washington State, I've played at Washington State before. That's brutal out there in the pack. You feel like you can get a foothold, and then like, if you're not getting destroyed by Gonzaga and UCLA, then Oregon and Washington and stanford and arizona just pile on you out there so uh washington state i've done it it's really tough and if you look i mean their facilities and academics are both just trash um virginia tech and wake forest both interest me just not enough to move and start over i don't think because we've got everything we could ask for at tulane in my opinion our prestige is already our school's prestige is already better. Now they're always going to have the conference prestige over us. Uh, their academics are a little better. Their facilities are a little worse. So it's just no. We'd be totally rebuilding. Now the thing at a school like Wake Forest that makes a difference is uh, I think their prestige can shoot up so much faster because there's so much more potential for winning big games throughout the year uh, and winning the ACC. Obviously, is a whole different ball game. Uh, so they can jump up a little faster, I think. At the same time, look at the competition that they're going to be facing year in, year out, uh, as opposed to Tulane. So uh, if this was a single-player save, guys, I would most definitely be headed to Wake Forest right now just to rebuild and, and kind of take over Wake, and I think that would be fun. But, uh, you know, for what the purpose of this was, none of these jobs make any sense at all. Uh, Tulane is in a far better situation than any of these schools. So... We move on past that date. Oh, shoot. I'm sorry, Chris. I forgot to bounce back over and see who was on probation. Uh, it, is it in... I think it's in media somewhere.
So it looks like Delaware is the only one recently announced. The rest might be holdouts from last year. All right, staff hiring. Let's see what the staff looks like. One year remaining on all of them. I can't remember if that means they'll be here next year or if all if I'm going to have to hire three new coaches. Um, but either way, I'll take a note real quick because they're really a strain on the budget. So what, 110, 135k here, and our budget's not much. Let's see if we can fix the budget. None of those guys are are good enough that I want to offer extensions or anything. So I think I can just finish in advance here, and all those coaches should come back. Yeah, I definitely couldn't leave Higgins. In you know, I, I couldn't do that to my boy Higgins. I couldn't do it to Mark at Holmes either. Yeah, the pro football is going to be coming out soon. We're really looking forward to that. Um, you know, as soon as it's available and we, uh, as soon as I can get a hold of it and get my feet wet a little bit, you know, understand where I'm coming from, then. Uh, I would like to try to get some of that up and streaming so everybody can see how that looks. All right, so a little bit of year-end adjustments to some of the ratings there. Uh, and you can always see, the more the coaches get to see those walk-ons, <laughs> the more they drop. I'm really disappointed in this guy. He was a top 100 recruit, I'm fairly certain. Yeah, number 80 nationally. I mean, you would think he would have been all right. So I don't know what his deal is. All right, meeting with the board, we're definitely asking for more money. There was no question about that. Request approved. All right, so it only went up 11,000, but, um, you know, that 11, or, I can't do math tonight, 13,000. But that 13000 would have been, <laughs> that would have increased what we ended up spending on recruits by like 33% or something. Um, so that that would make a big, big difference for us. You know, it's not, I've had some, sometimes I've got that budget increase approved and the increase has been like fifty, hundred thousand dollars $100,000. It's just been ridiculous. So uh, this is... To, to see it approved, I got really excited, and then to see it only go up 13000 I mean, it's not as much as I would have hoped. It would have been cool to go over 200000 but, hey, more money is more money. Uh, it shows that, you know, to me, you know, just up in my headspace creatively or whatever, it's like, all right, they're, they're willing to invest, you know. I had a, I did a long single-player save with Georgia, and I got denied on every budget increase, every facilities increase, everything. They just kept driving me into the dirt, denying everything. And eventually, that's why I left. I was like, man, this is stupid. I'm going to a school that already has like already has facilities and budget and all that. So uh, to see them invest in, that's cool. Let's move along. Yeah, you got to spend all your money, and even then... Uh, I don't. Sometimes, uh, if your prestige isn't great or if your budget's already really good, they're not going to do it. Uh, but something like this, where your prestige has made a decent jump, you spend all of the budget. Uh, you're usually going to get it once every two or three years, I think. What is it you think should be nerfed? You can game it after you get your players. Oh, you just mean uh, spending all the budget? Yeah, I mean, they, they could change the way it works. Because to me, the budget, for the most part, isn't about the recruiting. You can, 
I mean, you can control all of your other expenses and, and keep a baseline of money available for recruiting. To me, those budget increases really make a huge difference in the coaches that you're hiring, especially that recruiter, which is by far the most important coach in my opinion. Of course, you know you're always going to hit that. You're always going to hit that wall once you've built a good team. You, know, you can't just like have a bunch of five-star guys sitting on the bench. The game, it's designed well enough that that never happens. So, um, but the difference is you got the good recruiter. You can go in and pick your recruits more than like oh, I'll take whatever top twenty-five guys I can get. Yeah, I agree. The board shouldn't hold it against you if you don't spend it all. Because it's not necessarily just for recruiting or whatever. Like I said, it, to me, it's more about coaches. Let's see what, how that two-man class ended up ranking. So they ranked us as number 40 overall. Which, you know, having the team coming back that we've got to add in the number 40 recruiting class, that's not too shabby. Uh, you know, it could be better. We could be the Louisville Cardinals up here at number four. Um, but... You know, 40s, 40s are respectable, that kind of thing. Um, we just didn't need a ton. As long as we don't have guys transferred out, we didn't need a ton. So to still be top 50 when you don't really need anything crazy, that's pretty good. And, I mean, to, let me rephrase that. We did need a point guard, and we needed some insurance in case Higgins went pro, uh, and we got both of those things. So let's head off and buy our reports Let's see. Oh, I guess it would have showed us if I just moved on. Well, There's 53,000 remaining budget. And I think we'll have two, three. We might have seven scholarships available this year. <clears throat> All right. Did it not tell me in the inbox? Yeah, seven scholarships open, 53000 left to spend. And, of course, that's assuming no transfers. But those eight guys we've got, uh, seven of them are absolutely rock solid. And then that Jeff Lice or whatever is a little bit shaky, but so be it. We'll take a look at it here in a second. All right, 53,000, but we've got a ton of guys we need to bring in. So let's... Let's see. Let's get basic reports on the Southeast, the Great Plains, and should we grab a national? No. Now let's stick in the Southeast, the Great Plains. We're having, we're having good success in both of those. They're both pretty good recruiting ground for us. That'll only be $10,000. it will leave us decent money. Uh, we can make all of our camp visits and everything and still be good to go. We're still on 43 prestige, so we're probably not, even though we're having some success, we're probably not drawing interest nationwide yet. So I think we'll be all right with those, those reports there. All right, so uh, coming straight out of the gate, the stars don't look amazing on Cole and Harris, uh, but I, I know they'll be fine. They're both top 100. They both did well in camp, so I'm not worried about that. that this is the same nonsense as when B.B. Higgins came in and they rated him one star, whatever nonsense that was. Uh, we know what we've got in Higgins, London, Jones, Holmes, Harris. Point guard will be a little bit interesting. Haywood <clears throat> was a little bit... Well, let's see here. I know he was a good camp performer. He was a ranked top 100 in the country. So, I mean, he's a junior. He's been around. He should be fine. Uh, Brian Cole was, what he end up? 31st in the country. Uh, another good performer. So, I mean, this position should be fine. It just doesn't show up on this screen. But this screen, especially on June 5th, I never let this screen bother me. I know Higgins and London are both players on the inside. I know that Jonathan Harris will be more than capable uh, rotating through as that third big man 
and you know it's, it's given at least a star and a half here. Uh, he played some decent minutes for us in the past. He was top 100. He's a junior now, so I mean he should be all right. So nothing here's bothering me except these red frowny faces. Why is Kevin London all pissed off? Expect starters minutes. You'll get them this year if you don't do something stupid. Uh, I don't know why he's mad at me. He's not concerned about playing time. We're winning. Who knows? Uh, the roster is just... Hold on, let's see. All right, so nobody transferred, so that's good. So no, the roster's fine the scouts are looking a little bit shoddy because in reality uh cole is probably at least a three-star player uh and the same with harris now the small forward position is definitely still looking shaky we really needed to add a little bit of depth there and we completely whiffed so once again uh you know, we'll probably last year calvin harris was kind of playing these guard positions this year I'll, I'll probably have him more as a two and three i don't know which of these two points i'll end up starting but they'll both play at point guard and we won't need anyone else in that rotation so holmes harrison jones can share the two and three positions and then london higgins harris and maybe even jeff weiss uh, can share those inside duties so we'll still be all right not quite the depth you know uh, i don't know that jonathan harris will be the same kind of player that Jay Malone was uh even if Con Kevin London can replicate what Ladeau was doing as a starter there's no way Lease is replicating what London was doing as a backup so we won't be quite as deep this year but this is especially these starters assuming that point guard isn't a complete train wreck these starters should still be very solid and I know if I if I go let the computer do this, they're going to try to have move Calvin Harris to the point and just completely load up this starting lineup, which isn't an awful idea, but except for the fact that I want Harris to hopefully slide over and play some three because we don't have anyone else other than Jones that can do it, and we really can't play him 40 minutes a game. So there's that. So we skip the transfer sessions because I can't stand transfers. Oh, before we end, I need to jump over and take a look at my coach and my coaching skills and see how those have changed. Should just be setting up our camps and then checking the coaching skills here. Did this just change again? Yeah, it changed again because it dropped Kevin London way back. It moved Brian Cole way up. Moved Harris up a little bit. So they did a little bit of reevaluation. They're knocking the lights back down. Whatever. I'm not going to worry too much about these stars. Because, I mean, look at our staff. Look at our scouting. Here's our scout, and he's, what's his scouting ability? 40. Don't know what he's talking about, especially on the younger guys. So here's my coach. Offensive skills up to 66, defense to 75, recruiting at 71, scout and then player development at 77. Wow. So definitely getting these skills up there, I mean, this is approaching the, the skill level that you want to have at Power 5 school. So, 41 years old, 204 career wins to 151 losses, four, was it four NCAA tournament appearances. So, it's, so, all four of those were with Tulane. I guess we did not reach it with A&M, unless it's just not counting it yet. <clears throat> the two Sweet 16s, no Final Fours twice the coach of the year 12 all-conference players uh no players of the year all americans no drafted players i expect that to change this year i think that 
Higgins and or Holmes both have very good chance to be drafted. Now, I don't guess the, the draft hasn't happened yet for our seniors that just left. Uh, there's, there's nothing that says Ladeau can't be drafted. So that would be exciting to see if we can wrap this stream up with our first draft pick. Yeah, we'll take a look at the champions. Alright, so we're at the point where I delete all these emails. Let's do that right now before I hit any more buttons and forget like I did with Chris's request. Let's see, we want the Almanac. Champions of NCAA. Alright, so yeah, you want to talk about powerhouses. Look what Villanova did. Three championships in ten years. So not too shabby there. North Carolina, Creighton, Louisville picked up a national runner-up. NC State did it back-to-back -back years. Creighton actually runner-up last year and the champ this year. Gonzaga has been the runner-up a handful of times. Hasn't won the big one yet. So there's the records from our association. Oh man, I am a little bit disappointed. I did not go over and check out uh, our outgoing seniors. I usually like to look at their career statistics before they leave uh, once they're the guys that I've actually recruited. Uh, so let's see if any of them show up in any kind of records, like career-wise. Uh, oh, look at that. Points in a single game. There's Marquette Holmes right at the top of the list. Oh, Lusick. Uh, we want career. So here's points in a career. Oh, Chris Ledeau, top of the list. Marquette Holmes will be the leader after this season, uh, unless something terrible happens. B.B. Uh, Higgins is also going to climb the list. Uh, so he'll be probably in the top three. So all these guys we're recruiting guys are going to be top three all-time scorers. Career assists, Brett Stetson, right there at the top of the list, no surprise. Uh, Market Holmes is top five, uh, not too shabby. <laughs> Even B.B. Higgins getting in on the act. Tulane has apparently not had a great history of point guards so far in this save. Rebounds, Higgins might be already winning this. Yeah. Going into his senior year, he's already the career leader in rebounds. Ladeau had 789. Uh, Higgins is going to break 1,000. Whew. Crazy. He's going to have over 1,000 points and over 1,000 rebounds. That's a heck of a career. Uh, speaking of double-doubles... <laughs> There's a reason I call him D.D. Higgins. Look at that. That's ridiculous. What he's, he's, a, he's played three seasons, so you figure around 100 games. He's getting a double-double something like 40% of the time. That's unreal. <laughs> that stat right there is ridiculous. I don't think we've had a triple-double. See if we get anything interesting. Market Holmes, second all time, and Stetson right there at third as far as three point shooting. Free throws, Lado over seventy five percent. Um. All right, so that's about all that I wanted to look at there. Let's get our summer travel planned out here, and then I think we might get the email on the draft after we do this. So, I'm going to Indy Elite. I'm going to let's five thirty-eight. Definitely going to Memphis. Uh, let's go on to Houston as well. You know, it, it might limit us, limit us a little bit, but uh, given that um, you know we've got less scholarship players and we've got a handful of seniors leaving. Uh, whereas last year we were pretty stacked and there wasn't that much time, this year should be totally different. Um, if in the next recruiting session I don't land at least four, if not five guys that are very solid, then you can talk all the trash you'd like, Agalia. Uh, this is going to be a, an important recruiting season.
All right, so recruiting begins, and here is your 2030 draft. See, there's Shannon Willis from Creighton. Louisville jumping up there on the list. A little Spartan action. There's a guy from Syracuse that took all the ones that um, Shannon Willis didn't. All right, so let's scroll through. Duke had a handful of draftees. There's Creighton jumping in on the action. Wichita State had a guy get drafted. Louisville with another. There we go. Look at Chris Ledeau, number 54. So, guys, there is our first player that got drafted in the entire save. Only took us 10 years to get there. But Ledeau got drafted 54th. Not too shabby. So, guys, I think this was a heck of a stream. We had our first Elite Eight, our first player drafted. Um, you know, our our coaches getting there skill-wise. We got a lot of things going for us. We got our budget increased. Uh, so this was definitely, I mean, we've been having, seems like every stream is another night of first. This one's no exception. I uh, hope that you guys really enjoyed it. I enjoyed bringing it to you. Uh, but we're going to wrap it up there, guys. Uh, thanks for stopping by. We'll see what the schedule brings as far as the pro football game coming out and when I can get access to that. And uh, I definitely want to bring you some of that, but I don't want to let this green wave go. we got to see how Higgins and Holmes wrap out their senior years at the very least. Uh, I do feel like that would, you know, that might be, depending on how much time I'm able to spend with this going forward, you know, maybe that's a stopping point, but I don't feel like this is. So, Thanks, guys, for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed having you here, and I'll see you all next time.